Okay, I think we can start. We still have a minute, but uh, there's a lot we have to talk about. So one one question, uh, at least that came up, right? This question about syntax errors. Uh, I assume they are when you're trying to do your uh, trying to do your solutions. So I just want to start off by saying, uh, let's take a minute and talk about how you how you're doing your labs and why it's set up the way it is set up. Uh, please, please, please ask me questions now, okay? Because uh, I've tried to do everything to make your life easy, but sometimes it may not appear that way. But if you ask me a question, at least I can explain and we can even make things better if possible, okay? So the main reason why your labs are, uh, so I, again, I'll ask one more time, is the font okay on the screen? I'm looking, I'm showing you a code board screen right now. Can you read, can you see my screen? Someone let me know, is the font okay, is the size okay? Yes, okay, yeah, good. Okay, so, okay, thank you. So the reason the reason why you are, uh, I have set this up, there are three or four reasons why it is set up this way. Reason number one is primarily for your benefit. In the sense that if you end up somewhere in a data science or a data analyst role in some kind of company, other than Jupyter Notebooks, the next option is for people to write code in conventional fashion using an IDE and have multiple files and structures in, in, in the code base, right? So typically if you're either in a job interview or day one of a job in a, in a company, there is a 50-50 chance or maybe it's 80-20 80, 80, uh, chance 80, uh, that you find that the code lives in multi-file solutions that look like this. And point number one, Point number two is this also involves a little bit of unit testing. Um, so then being familiar with that will also make you look more professional in an interview or career setting. Okay, so these are the reasons that it is there. Uh, it will, you will, you will only find out later when people ask you those questions. Okay, so even though there's a little bit of pain, uh, I will help you through all of those steps between now the discussion we have now and offline through emails. So uh, the last part of this is I tried to make the questions as easy as possible. Maybe they don't feel easy. Uh, and I also tried to make sure that you have some feedback when you write your code. So now the feedback comes in two forms, right? One is built in Python feedback, where Python will complain and give you syntax errors. And then of course, there will be errors from the test programs as well, right? So again, part of some of this will be obvious for those of you who are good programmers. We should look at error messages as our friends, even though the natural reaction is to run away from them because they are trying to give us some message, some information. So, okay, so with all that as background, now I'm looking at lab one here, and I think this is something that you should see when you go into lab one, like when you click on the panel and get in here, you should see something that looks like this, right? Basically, there's a bunch of functions you have to implement. And whatever those functions are supposed to do is given to you on the course page. I'm not going to flip back and forth between web pages, right? So I'm just going to work here right now. So I think the first thing that you can you can do is to just run it. Hopefully, when you when you click run in with nothing done, at least you don't get errors. I don't know if any of you tried this, but that should be the first step at least. If it's not, then you can reach out to me right away. Now, in order to reach out to me, if you take your code like this, and let's say you, you, you did something, you just put in a comment somewhere, right? Let's put a comment at the bottom of the file. You put in a comment, I made changes. And if you just go here and you say, uh, go to the project and, and you say save changes, then the changes get saved under your name right? And if you save changes and send me your login ID, I can look and see that you have actually made this change, right? So that becomes a nice way for us to work together. So you, if anything is breaking or giving trouble, some of you have tried to take screenshots and uh, share the information with me. Of course, you can add screenshots if you want to highlight something, but the easiest thing is to make, write your code and then tell me what problems you're seeing, okay? And usually what we are doing in this phase is hitting the run button to see any errors. So that is, is that, uh, let me pause quickly and ask, is that okay? Is that a, a initial, I, I, I want all of you to complain if anything is not, 
user friendly or complicated is is that part okay we have still a little ways to go somebody tell me it's okay and then i'll go to the next step okay good good so now so now the next thing is we have to ask an important question here this particular exercise lab 1 was made to teach us how to interact with a database using plain python right it's supposed to be the lowest ground state it was not meant for me to teach you all about relational databases and sql etc the assumption was that all of you know some sql if that assumption is not right then you have to reach out to me and we have to have a different discussion okay the the emphasis is how can we use python to interact with the database so you must understand tables and joins and sql now if you don't know that stuff this is a quick moment to take a couple of days and learn it and i assure you that being good and fluent at sql will be tremendously useful in your careers so don't take it as a too big a hurdle to overcome just invest a little time uh, if you need help from me let me know and we can get through that now having said that this is all about databases immediately we had asked the question where is the database so now what i did is i actually made it easy for you because many courses which have databases involved it's hard to connect to a database and run queries so here i've actually made it such that you have a database already for you and the database is actually created uh, on the fly okay now i'm telling you some complicated things so don't worry too much but it's always good to know the database is created for you on the fly as soon as you do this import okay in this case as soon as you do this import this database is created for you and then uh, you can connect to the database using this connection string so in other cases you have to code the connection string but i actually did all that work for you i basically created a nice little function you should take a couple of minutes and play with this function but this function basically says give me any sql statement that is valid on this database i can run it for you so tomorrow if you want to take the same code and put it on another database then you have to change this connection string that's all so you can even make the connection string into a parameter for this query but right now it is just taking sql as input so this is kind of working only with this database it will execute that sql string whatever you give it against the database and return whatever is possible by calling cursor dot fetch all right and it doesn't do anything cursor dot fetch all is defined by the sql lite 3 package right so that is the construction here right and now we have to ask the question okay if this is all true how could we test it so in order to make your life easy i tried to give you a test function right it says test database it constructs a sql string we know there's a students table in this database so it just selects everything from the students table and we want to see what comes back if we run this now lot of you have been trying to run your code there are two ways you could run this code so let's see if we can work through both of them i'll show you the not so ideal way first and then let's look at the better way after so this is one way that some of you have tried to do this can anybody in chat tell me how does this work how will we get this to run how will we get test database to execute and produce something okay so we will say print here maybe okay even we can do this but when will this get executed if i hit run will this execute if i just hit naively if i hit run what will make this you have to call it in main okay so now we're getting to the right point right we have to do something in main perhaps so now this is why i have a main function so usually when you have multi file programs you always want to have it organized so that there is a main and your program enters through main and from main you can call anything that is needed right so in this case our code is living in this file called analysis.py and what we can do is in main we are imported analysis.py as a so now we can say a dot a dot test okay let me just copy it from there just you can grab the the same function call here and put this in main so let me just take it out of here for now and put it in the right place right it should be here except it has to have the prefix of a others it will not be able to find it so even like this let us keep it like this and let's start getting syntax errors right so if we run this what will happen now we should get errors okay 
but what i want us to try to do is go and read the errors right carefully and it says on line 19 there is a problem immediately we can see on line 19 i just created this and it's actually even better it says i don't know what test database is now you need a little python kind of experience right and then immediately you'll fix it like this and then run it okay so now we got so this is your starting point right and this point means that everything is connected everything's wired up you're able to query the database if you want to play around a bit more you just go and change the sql here to something else and you are able to run any kind of sql statement and you can see the results now let's just make one thing which is puzzling to some of you let us select if i remember correctly first name from students uh, and run this and you see something very interesting here and i did not make this pain for you what do we see what has come back to us when we print this what is the what is the data type that has come back to us it obviously looks like a list but what is it a list of a list of tuples and that is not my creation right that is the creation of the sqlite package sqlite package says if you execute anything against the database you are going to get back lists of tuples and if you want to do anything more it's up to you to figure out how to extract for example the names from the tuples etc so anyway i will show you that in a in a in a moment most likely okay so we can go through that in little bit more detail uh, but i want to pause here now let me just complete one more thought and then i will ask question so if you go back to analysis.py you could have put your code some of you have done code which looks like this you could have put this code here and 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 now i have to ask a question when will this code execute that is important to know will this code execute at all anyone want to guess <laughs> somebody says no okay <laughs> before the database is created well the thing is that this thing will execute at some random moment okay but the random moment is not that random it will execute as soon as the import is called because when it imports the module when it imports analysis.py at some point when it imports it it will run through all statements that have to be executed on analysis.py and so then you get into a lot of confusion and complexity and i don't even want to go there right because you have main here does this line execute before the database does the database get created before what is going on right so if we follow a good coding principle and say that we will always all the code that we want to run we will always have a bunch of things here that do the work for us this will be where we will create all the print statements and all the displays etc for help you can create additional functions in analysis.py but let's not run anything from analysis.py it's just a hygiene thing okay if some of you have probably made this work and it works for you it's okay i just want to highlight because i've seen some of your code let's get everything into main.py then the sequence is also very clear and here you can see you know and in fact i've said these lines create the database for you okay so hopefully that should clarify many things does it clarify many things <laughs> i don't know so let's pause now so we so i can uh, i can i can answer any immediate questions you have at this level this getting started and running things many of you are past this level so you're going to say i don't have questions but can you clarify why it's better to run in main instead of doing it in analysis no because in main you have control for example if i have three functions i don't have three functions but let me put them anyway suppose i had three functions in main i know this runs first this runs second this runs third but if i have functions here in analysis.py in different locations then you really don't know who is running first and who is running last right because you don't explicitly tell python please run it for me just now python says oh you asked me to import analysis.py for example if you go to main and don't even import analysis.py suppose we don't do this because we don't need it in main right if i don't have any a, a, any statements here i don't even need to import it then nothing will run then suddenly you do an import and all your code will start running which looks very unclear what is going on right so the way we should think about is all these side files are are, are dormant they contain functionality but they are not asked to execute anything 
all of the control to execute different functions is kept in main or or pack or 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 functions related to main for example in in main itself you could have defined helper functions right so there's a kind of hierarchy the top of the hierarchy is main and that is where all of the control what happens first second third fourth fifth should be directed from these little packages they just like analysis.py they just provide a a set of functions to be invoked by someone in this case main does that clarify so also it means that in my mind i have a picture what comes first and what comes second and what comes third so for example when i read main.py like this i say okay looks like a whole bunch of functionality has been imported but nothing has been executed the moment you put a print statement inside analysis.py even if i put print hello that means something got executed not just you know not just functions getting compiled to run okay uh -huh. can you clarify uh, okay yes please ask okay even if i don't explain fully then follow up an email we'll have a small exchange and we'll settle it but it is really important this this hierarchy in which things are organized in which things are created who comes first who comes second is really important as somebody said in the comment somewhere sometimes if you break the the order you may not even have a database and suddenly all your code will start failing because the database hasn't been created so for example that is why i advertised very boldly here the database is created for you when you do this here for example so that means after this if you run anything but then you have to guarantee that you're going to run after this so you should not run anywhere before this okay um, so that's a, that's in a nutshell but now a lot of you are confused by this list of tuples but can somebody tell me why this could be confused i know it can be confusing but can some for me right now it's very clear what the problem is as soon as i ran my test code and i put a simple sql in there i see that it's a list of tuples now i have a problem to solve how can i take data out of a list of tuples which we can discuss we i hopefully we can discuss in a minute i'll show it to you in the notebook so you can see a little bit more friendly uh, outputs maybe but but at least the question is clear there's no puzzles is everyone with me there no puzzles somebody should prompt me no puzzles or still puzzles at this level because i want to show you that when you send me stuff i want to show you the next thing but the next thing i'm going to show you is a little bit insane but i want to show you i want to show you that sometimes we have to deal with nature in its in in, in its insanity and uh, yes what did you type to get the name in brackets no i didn't type i okay so let's see what how did we get the name in brackets because we went to analysis.py the only function that i ran was this function test database and test database says select first name so only first name is going to come back but the sql light library where cursor.execute is called and cursor.fetch all is called it returns everything as a list of tuples so sqlite actually puts it into the brackets the brackets are the tuple does that make sense by the way there's also one more complicated thing uh, i keep wondering whether i should show it to you here or i should show it to you in a notebook but let me say it now since the code is here and we have it in our eyes see there's a very tricky thing that happens which i tried to hide from you but maybe you want to know it anyway cursor dot execute sql will execute the sql then i want to ask all of you a question what do you think the cursor will contain at that point can somebody tell me suppose i ran and i stopped the code right here on this line what would be inside the cursor anyone nobody wants to guess okay so let me tell so the cursor is yes sql has well kind of implicitly right so imagine that okay so let that's a good comment so let us go and say suppose i was running this test database query where there is a specific sql right so now we can make it a concrete question not an abstract question specific sql is given we call execute and fetch all so it goes here it connects to the database it gets a cursor 
and then it runs cursor dot execute sql at this point it should have some at that point it will contain the first name of all of all the students kind of true but not true so what we should think of and this is a little complicated maybe i'll think of a nice way to explain next time but the correct technical idea is that the cursor is like a the python i concept is it's a generator but another way of thinking about it is it's like a list but each time you have to call get next for it to bring you the next first name of the student and you have to basically because the contract here is that it could be a very long list and maybe it's not a good idea to try to pull a million students name into into the program maybe you can take them 100 at a time and do something with it etc so it, anyway that's more advanced discussion should i bring all of them or bring them little by little but the cursor is actually built to do that so you could you have a different way where you can iterate over a cursor just like you iterate over a list you can process one student name at a time but that is not what is being done when we say cursor dot fetch all fetch all basically says you know i know that there's not too many students so please bring all of them to me okay and what it does is it fetches all now this is the tricky part it fetches all of them puts them into this list of tuples and spits it out now the important question if i ask cursor dot fetch all again what will happen anyone want to guess if we just call it again not call execute again just call cursor dot fetch all again anyone <laughs> no if you call fetch all again it will be empty because you basically took everything out by calling fetch all once okay so it's a source of a small but subtle bug and some of you could get stuck hopefully if you run this function as is none of that is permitted right so i have saved you from all of that chaos so if you just use this function as a package so see i was trying to being a nice helpful person by giving you a utility function to hide you from all this chaos which is basically run the sql and get me everything in one shot and we're done but if you open up this code and start running lines one by one and you might be able to do all that in a notebook you can get yourself in some corners but at least this much you should know fetch all will fetch all once after it fetched all there's nothing more to fetch so it will just give you a blank list the second call will just give you a blank list okay maybe it's too much of detail but still maybe i will ask you guys is it was it worth for me to mention it or not i thought i saw it in one of your questions somewhere so then i thought okay i might as well spend a minute on cursor uh so what does cursor exactly do it processes all the information and fetch all fetch all not pushes it out pulls it out yes or pushes it out yeah exactly so cursor dot execute executes the sql and then everything let's say is in limbo right meaning it knows what to process but now you have an option of processing one record at a time or fetch all right so fetch all is what pulls all of the records out yeah 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 you can do fetch one some some other libraries have get next or whatever uh, if you want i i can follow up in an email with how to process one by one but in general you wouldn't need to go by chunks yeah for 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 many most reasonable cases but it is important to know that some day some day you would have a problem where if you call fetch all and there's a million students in the database suddenly the whole program is hanging because you didn't expect it to take that long to come back or whatever else it is right so it is important in fact some people would say the correct protocol is first to do count star so you have an idea select count star from students table so you know that it has only 100 students in it or whatever 10 students in it right and then you can call fetch all the 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 complement to fetch all is like fetch one i think it's like get next or something i have to check okay i check and send a, send a, send a, send a note yes it doesn't matter if they are like if there are a lot of if there are a lot of other commands in here not related to cursor though you shouldn't manipulate the cursor here right like you cannot you cannot execute another sql command for example but as long as the cursor is left intact if you have a lot of code it doesn't matter just when you need to process it you just call fetch all hopefully that clarifies good question i i love when you are asking me these questions 
So, okay, so are we ready to close the chapter on curses? I think we can close the chapter on curses if we are comfortable with the idea that this execute and fetch all command here will take care of you for everything you need, at least for now. Right? If you just pass SQL in and expect to get back a list of tuples, that's a reasonable contract and you have it. Does that make sense? You have one problem left. How do I get things out of tuples? But many of you have solved it and we can, we can talk about it. It should not be more than a line of code though. Okay, so before I move on, I want to show you something. Uh, I won't name anyone, but I will show you something here. Somebody sent me their code and said, I'm getting errors. I just want to show you how do I survive? Because many of you must have the frustration. So imagine how much the person who wrote this code knows whose it is, but I won't tell, okay? So um, how do I debug all the code that you have written? And how do I deal with other people's syntax errors, right? And the answer is, first of all, I have to get a cup of coffee and be patient. And then if I say run, there it says syntax errors, okay? Now, I don't know how many of you can debug with this with me online right now, but I'm going to show you that the answer is completely insane a little bit. But I also want to show you that Python helps me. It says there's some trouble on line 41. And it took me a few minutes but I hope you can see, can you see some dots here? Can anyone see like little dots here on the left, which are not there in the other functions? Yes, those dots came because there are some hidden HTML characters, which look like this. You see here somewhere it has printed it out. Can you see? Those are extra characters that are invisible in the editor that came from some copy paste. And so this code is going to fail and to most of you as students, at least who are not experienced, there's your, your no way to understand why my code is failing. So this is a very bad example. Typically this should not happen, but my only reason for showing you this is to say, if we work together and take a deep breath and, and look at it, eventually we can find out what it is. And there's usually a, a, a simple explanation. So basically I went through this process. I, I found there was a problem on line 41. I commented out this function, everything started working. Then I went in and I started looking and then I read the message again and I saw the characters. Then I went back and looked at it and then sure enough, I found it. And so now we can go ahead and fix this and move on. But I gave this as an example to show you that stuff breaks, right? I mean, it's if we are in this world, uh, anywhere related to data and software, breaking of things becomes part of our lives, right? And having a, kind of can do attitude to work through them is essential. So don't let it defeat you. Okay. If you're stuck with something and it's breaking and you've spent an hour, uh, don't let it kind of break down your enthusiasm. I'm here definitely to work with you on it. So maybe if you spend a finite amount of time, do, uh, do reach out to me by email and I will follow up with you. But also I want you to be able to do this little kind of troubleshooting on your own because that's how you're going to build up your own skills, right? I won't be there tomorrow maybe. And then you should be able to fly on your own. So I just want to say the goal here with your labs is exactly this. Run the code, see where the error is, tries to isolate it. And then eventually, hopefully you can fix it. And I'll be there working with you side by side, right? So if any of you get stuck, you some of you send me emails. I try to respond within the day or two at least. So okay, so I'm going to close off code. So what else? What else can I tell you on code board? Which is related to doing your labs and submit. Okay, so the last thing I should tell you is tests. I forgot. So let me just cover that. So the important thing is now. Let's say that there is this function. Let us pick a function here. Test student first names. Right there, no, this thing I know is designed to test student first names, but let me skip all that after. So here's what I want you to do. You go to analysis.py and you write whatever code. Let's say you implemented one of them. Make sure you have something in main to execute your code and see that it's running properly. As soon as it's running properly, you can hit the test button. And if you have completed one question, you should have passed at least one test, right? And if you're interested, you can open this file. That's why I made everything open. So you can see there's no magic. So for example, here, the student, this one executes the method. Let me show you exactly what happens. You see here, a dot student first names. It runs the code you've written and it compares it with the answer. And then says it must be equal 
right? These tests are a little harder to write, so that's why I'm not making you write the tests yourself. If you really want, like programming and want to make progress, a nice challenge would be to write your own tests. You can add your own tests. Don't get, don't get yourself too confused because you don't have to pass your tests. You have to pass my tests at least. But it's good to think about how these tests, yeah. I think I found an error in lab two to pass the test. Yes, yes. You have to have the function return the probability. Yes, yes, I think so. Actually you did and somebody else did. Uh, but I wanted to say, I think I'm talking to Christian's comment here. I think Maggie also had found something like this, but I fixed it this morning. So Christian, can you check it and let me know that it's okay? Just ran it and it doesn't work? <laughs> okay, uh, let's follow up offline. Okay, I thought I fixed it this morning. Maybe I didn't hit the save button. Okay, so yeah, we need dead people. Yeah, the thing is that dead was zero and alive was one or something. Maybe I flipped zero and one. I'm not sure what I did there. But okay, yes. Uh, uh, but that's a good example, right? I want you to be in that position where you are driving the car and you know what the correct answer is. Then if the test is not doing the right thing, just reach out to me, I'll fix it right away, right? So don't get too fussed about it. What, what I want all of you is to write your code and hopefully the question is clear and therefore the answer is also clear to you. So I want to give you full control over it and full credit if you find, hopefully the, if the whole thing is not full of bugs. I might have one or two, but hard for me alone to create all this code and test it and make everything perfect. So I'm trying my best, but there could be one or two things off. So anyway, thank you all for helping me find them too, right? Hopefully once I fix it, they stay fixed. But anyway, we look at this one, uh, uh, this problem that you raised, Christian. Um, okay, so uh, are we done with tests? Are you guys okay with the tests? Do you understand how the tests are working? Each, each one of these test functions invokes one of your functions. Okay, so after you do the run, and check out everything working properly in main, then you hit the test button and you should see, okay? So can I, can I wrap up on this and we go further? Yes, okay. So, uh, so now that we're done with this, I think, uh, I think we can just go, go off. So today, what is it? We have to talk a little bit about pandas and in particular, we wanna talk about this Titanic thing. Okay, before I go to, Titanic, maybe we can just quickly do this because I think I think this may be a good moment to start talking about it. So if all of you go to the course webpage and there's a data analysis project here, if you click on this project details page, uh, it might take a second to load, yeah. Okay, so this is, there should not be a lot here, but basically this is a place where you can submit your project. So how does the project work? So you can read all that stuff, but basically I've tried to give you a chance to set up a project of your own interest. The last time I this, did this course, there were a lot of very different projects from baseball to analyzing African economics or whatever. Pick your favorite topic and collect some data, set up some kind of analysis that you'd like to do and uh, code up everything in a Jupyter notebook. You make the Jupyter notebook in the cloud like I did and just paste a link at the end here you can paste you can paste a link okay you as you read yeah does it have to be no it doesn't have to be but uh, is there any what else would you how else would you like to submit your code because the only other way is to put it in git or something dot pi no but the point was the, okay so so again a uh, very important question I want all of you to be conversant with Jupyter Notebooks because that's what the industry is using today. And the nice thing about the Jupyter Notebook, I'll show you in a second. We are going to, in the, in the, in the next class, I'm gonna do a simple, little bit of analysis. Maybe we'll do a linear regression or something. And in the class after that, I plan to do a little visualization. That means some charts and graphs and so on. And even today, I will demo some of that for you. So the only way that is easy for you today to put your code and graphs and some math calculations and some text analysis together into one report would be in a Jupyter Notebook for you at least. There are a couple of other ways to do it, but 
they would take you far away so i would encourage all of you to look at that as a as a way right it will be probably be easy for you to do uh, does that answer your question why 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 a notebook would be good for you yeah and you'll see in a moment that visualization is an important ingredient right when we do data science we must be able to show some charts and graphs and it's a good way to look at data so okay so any questions about the project there's really not much in other words i don't have many constraints i'm trying to keep it as open and take initiative and do it spend some time this also means that when you go to a job interview or something and somebody says what do you know about data analysis or whatever apart from other things you can say i even did a project on xyz and i can show you something right that makes it look like you've actually done some work and it's not all theoretical and it's hard for students to show a lot of work experience right so if you have at least one project with some good work in it i think it will open some doors at least people will be interested right so whatever you get is directly proportional to how much effort you put in so please make sure that you put adequate effort not so much to please me as much as to create a good experience for yourself and be able to use it for yourself um so okay uh what do you think uh is this a good opportunity does anyone have comments or questions you have about 3 weeks or so right so you have enough plenty of time as well uh, very quiet bunch but still any any questions on the project then i can i can switch topics any questions or you guys all set should be good okay good give it a good shot okay i mean the uh, again take a little bit of time to think about what kind of stuff would i be interested in what kind of analysis can i do if it aligns with your interests even better if it aligns with your job search even better like if you're going to finance do something in finance right if you're going to some other industry then something connected would be helpful so anyway so make it make it your own and uh, let it shine and it will do you well okay so let's switch gears now and let's go to this uh, titanic data set so <laughs> so okay so uh, i guess i have to start with uh, why did i put titanic here because my initial reaction when i saw titanic data set was why do i even want to be bothered with this but i think i changed my mind subsequently because somehow i don't have the full reason but somehow it has become a standard example in so many data science books and uh quizzes and whatever right so then i said okay i won't fight against the 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 viral trend of this data set we'll just embrace it and just play with it okay and maybe it is going to tell us so in fact even there is a i don't know if any of you have joined kaggle and done some data science uh, data analysis competitions but kaggle has one competition on this data set and you can even look into you know submitting your solution getting a grade and so on. but anyway so you can load up this data set here uh, let me see if this thing is running at this point uh, so you can load up this data set i'll talk as it runs in the background when you run it it might take a minute but what is important here is like all data sets they can be unwieldy and that becomes less than zero for all of us especially when you go for your projects you're going to find that the data sets are not immediately very clear what they are all and so the first thing you want to do is to spend some time to try to understand the the nature of the data set and in this case i actually took all of that uh, all of the fields and i quickly summarized for you so maybe you can even just read it here although you can find it all over the internet descriptions of this but the important data analysis question here is a lot of people died and the question is given a person either the name of the person or whatever some information about a person how well could i have predicted whether they were going to survive or die right that is the question to be asked here um so how does how does everyone feel does everyone feel that that's an easy question to answer or what do you think anyone want to guess how do, how do we go about doing this does anyone want to guess how can we get how can we make a prediction quickly no 
No? Okay, so we'll explore. Okay, if anyone gets an idea, just share, share, share it with me. So the first thing anyway is what we do with all typical data analysis projects is to start to get familiar with the data, right? So if you, if you look at the columns of this data set, you should see these columns are actually in the data set. But now we can start to do some simple things. So for example, we can say, what, what ages did the people have? Maybe the, maybe age is a good predictor. Maybe the older people suffered more or not. Or we can try to understand, is it full of old people or young people? So you could look at different characteristics of your data, right? And while you do this, this becomes a reasonable place for you to play and sharpen your panda skills. So if you take this and you say df dot uh, sort values by age, you can see that there are a lot of very young people. Where is the age here? Okay, this also shows you there are a lot of people where age is not there. Okay, but maybe we can do something better. We can say what's the max age and what's the min age. And you see that there are some old people and there are some young people. Now immediately I can show you that maybe a picture is worth a thousand words. You just do a histogram. So let's see, it might take a minute to plot. Okay, so there you go. So now notice that pandas and mathplotlib, these are the two libraries in play. They work together to make it fairly easy for us to do our work, right? Normally to take data and make a graph and all this can be very uh, cumbersome. Here I just say, okay, so let's see what was done. We said df.h, so let me take out this dot hist. This is purely panda query. It pulls out one column. So these are the numbers, but it's hard to understand what numbers are telling us. So I just threw in a dot hist here, right? Which will say, make a histogram. Now, in this discussion today, I'm going to show you a couple of pictures just to get you starting to feel like, oh yeah, it would be nice to have all these pictures, right? It'll be nice to, for me to be able to visualize my data, but I will spend a whole session on visualization in the last session. Unfortunately, that's the order in which I put it, but probably it makes sense too. First, we want to be able to do the analysis and then visualize maybe, but uh, anyway. So I will sprinkle in a few of these pictures for now, even if the code is not 100% clear, how does it work? You can ask me questions right now, but I'll give you a bottom up explanation of how the visualization libraries are working when we do that section. Okay. And, and how to control things more. For example, if I want to put a title here or I want to put a access change or something, how do I do all that? Controlling your visuals is very important. So I'll show you how to do that later. But for now, we'll just use it so I can, instead of telling many words, I can show you. Okay, so now there was this discussion about survival probabilities. So for example, if you want to see how many females, how many women survived, let's look at this from a panda's point of view. So let me do it here in a blank cell. So first of all, you have to basically extract all the females, right? So let's start with this thing here. So the data frame, has a sex attribute in it. So let's even take off this and start here. So start always on the inside is probably good. So if you say sex equals female, notice it gives me back a list of true and falses. So wherever it's true, it means those are females. Now pandas has this thing we talked about before. Theoretically, now we're going to use it. If you want to filter by criteria, you put this Boolean array. This is called a Boolean array because it has only trues and falses in it. You put the Boolean array as an index, an indexer, let's call it, as an indexer to this data frame, right? If you put this Boolean array as an indexer, you get only the subset. So let's go and look at sex. You see the sex is all populated to be female. So you do actually project out only the female part of the data frame, right? And once you do this, you can ask the question, how many of them survived? So you can say dot and it survived is a column which has zeros and ones in it. Um, so we can just, yeah, here's the column. So we can say dot survived. And you get something. So now I'd ask you a question. How do I find out how many women survived? I got this far. What do I do? Does anyone, what's your favorite way? Length. Okay, so there is a way to do that. You can, length of what though? Length, right now, even the answer I've done here, no? So if I do length, it'll tell me how many females are there, right? If I do length, let's do length. If I do length on this, it'll tell me that the, this is roughly the total number of women, 314. 
It's a useful number. Ah, somebody said some. Okay, some will work, right? But some is kind of clever because what is some saying? Some is saying that what is inside has zeros and ones in it. So if I just sum it, it will just add up all the ones. That's all the people who survive. Yes. So you have two ways of doing it, right? You can just say sum on this and it will work in this case. Or you can take out only those who are survived and take the length on it. I said it in words. I'll just do it this way, right? So here's 233 and you have to divide this by the total number of women. So we can just say divided by length of this. Does everyone agree with something like this? Does something like this look like a, a number? For the percentage though, right? And what about how do we find the percentage of people who died then? Of women who died? Anyone? So we now found who survived. How do we find out how many died? One minus answer. I think somebody said one minus answer. That's it, right? So you take this whole thing and you can just subtract one from this. One, one minus this. That's because we know this is a percentage, right? So, oops. Okay, and while I'm doing this, so what do I have to do if I want men? How do we find this for men? That's it, right? So somebody got it on, yeah, well done. So that's all you have to do, right? So fairly, fairly, fairly simple, uh, fairly simple change. So you can do this. I don't, I don't want, I don't need to beat this to death. So let's keep going. Okay, so you can see what was the, what are, okay, so what is the, what was that? Okay, we did some calculations. Now let's draw an inference. What is, what is, what is that telling us? Okay, so let I guess we have to do the males as well, right? Um, Okay, so let's just do. Oops. Okay, so what is that telling us? If you remember the previous number. Okay. So what is this? What is this telling us? You can all run it. So. So what is this data telling us? That it's 0.25 for females and like 0.5 for men? Anyone? We're... Sorry, Mayank, what was the question? How many females died? No, no, I'm saying, so we calculated two. So let's put the two numbers below one second. So let's put the two numbers below. So this is for male and th this is for female, right? So what are these two numbers telling us? I'm trying to hint at the fact that we already have a predictive model. Men are less likely to survive, exactly. So the model is a very simple model, right? It simply says, if male, you die. And half of the time, at least it's going for males, half of the time it's going to be right. Yeah. For females, it's not going to be, uh, for females, it's going to be quarter of the time wrong, right? 25 of them did not survive. You're going to say all females survive and all males die. But I just want to show you how we build models very quickly, right? I mean, of course, this is a very poor model. It's not even imaginative. But I want to say that the models are built by manipulating the data and asking common sense questions. There's no rocket science and magic or voodoo involved here, right? They get more and more tricky as we go. But what I want all of you to develop is the way to ask interesting questions of the data and get some answers. Then we can build all kinds of models, regression and all kinds of things. But first we must be able to think about the data in simple qualitative terms. Okay, with that done, so is that, is that clear? Any questions there? I suspect not. So I'm going to keep going. So now I want to show you that one thing that we might want to do is manipulate subsets of the data 
and see if we can detect patterns. So this is what we're doing in the beginning part here, right? We're not yet building any complicated models. We are basically slicing the data in different ways and then trying to see if we can detect something. So there are three different ways that we can compute kind of information for subsets of the data. So for example, let us look at this first query here. This is, a, this is where pandas shine, right? Already you could have seen doing all this calculation for females and males to find out what is the probability of survival was only one line of code. So if you write it in Python, some of you have asked me this question, why can't we just write it in Python? If you write it in Python, you have to loop through a list, you have to put a filter, you have to project, you have to keep temporary variables, you have to do a lot of work. Number one, it's tedious to code, but number two, it will also be very slow. So if this was a data set with a million people in it, it would take forever. Whereas when we do this kind of code in pandas, it's going to be much faster. This is what I tried to show you with the NumPy session, right? It makes unfeasible questions feasible. It can be performant, okay? So now let's go here and run this, look at this query. It's a very much more powerful query. It says, hey, everything we did, can we summarize by saying, there are females who survived and females who did not survive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my data and I'm going to group it by these two fields. And then for each group, I just want to count how many members are there. Okay, in this case, I just picked one column and did count. There are other ways to do this. But if you run this one query and look at the results, which is here, you see you get everything in one shot, right? You see, you see the you see the bare numbers. So if you want, you can even convert this into percentages, right? But if you, you can see the that you know how many females uh, did not survive, how many females survived, how many males did not survive, how many males survived. You see it all in one query. So these group by queries are very useful for us when there are many criteria to look at subgroups. It's very useful, and this group by can be any subset of columns. So it's a very powerful grouping operation. Those who have used Excel and other things might be familiar with pivot table. So there's also a pivot table equivalent here, right? But maybe later you will end up using this group. I don't know, it's a stylistic thing. But just to show you correspondingly, there's a pivot table query and you can just, you know, if you're familiar with pivot tables, you, you have, you know, basically you index, you know, one, one, one axis is the uh, uh, male, female sex, column and the other is the survived one and the counts go into the boxes, okay? So that's specified by this aggregate ag function, okay? So you can do pivot table and the last one is cross tab, okay? For, for historical reasons, it has been in various packages. I would strongly recommend for you guys to get really good at one or two of these and maybe not all three and then you can use it. I also wanted to show off that you can even color things and so on. So now you see the reporting aspects become good. If this was going to be shared with someone and you have five different uh, subgroups using colors and you have color maps which will grade everything and so on and so forth. So the point only is to say that lots of cool things can be done. I don't want you to get overwhelmed by the, by the path, but I want to place the thought in your mind that if you have some ideas, maybe there's already some easy way to do it in this place. We just have to look and find it, okay? And all this will be useful when you do your project. Now I want to get back to this thing. So we did all this with numbers, but we still didn't get a good intuition that more men survived or more women survived. We see the numbers, but we don't see it. So probably the best thing here is to make a picture. And this is why I said, if we do graphics, then a lot of things become easy for us to see. So like I said, I will explain all the graphs later, but for now we can learn one type of plot. It's called the count plot. And basically you pick a field, like for example, you're going to partition a data by this. You're going to color your data by this other column, right? So then it automatically says how many categories are there. So for example, only, only alive and dead, two categories are there. So there are only two colors. And then it just, just does everything for you. It's called a count plot. So the height is the actual number of elements, right? So everything we did with the cross tab and everything group by, the equivalent is done, but then the answer comes back to us in a graph. But of course, when you look at this graph, it's pretty easy to see that the people who did not survive in males is much higher than females and so on. So hopefully that is impactful to you, right? That the visual is very powerful. 
and when you are searching for clues you should treat yourself to some nice visuals let me pause a minute so 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 any questions at this point why titanic are you guys starting to feel like yes we could play with this data and build up our skills a bit more and it's better than just working with theoretical you know data at least it's a concrete data set from somewhere um but before i proceed any questions or comments it's interesting right the questions really occur only when you sit down to do your labs <laughs> not when i show you something it's like okay whatever but anyway uh, just if yeah um so so okay so let's um let's let's look at this quickly now so um there is an important concept here remember i told you that ages there were some nas blanks that's something you have to live with in your data so i'm going to show you a nice little trick here if you there is a little uh, function in pandas called is na by the way it also has an is null which is equivalent so pick one of them and use it so we we'll say so let's look at this query carefully now first of all we let me start with the data frame take the data frame take the age column okay here when i'm doing this quickly i want to highlight one thing again it's a style thing but so df bracket i can put the name of any column to get just that column right i can i can do this or i can do df dot age like i've done on the left so this is a small moment for me to say that they are equivalent sometimes this is easier for us to type at least i find it easier to type initially i thought i would never do it but now i find myself doing this more and more it turns out that this is working but except for two cases for example if the name has you know i don't know age xyz if if there's a space in the name of the column the right hand side thing will work but the left hand side thing will not work obviously because python will not allow you to say age space something right so the way i've worked around that is to make sure that all my columns even if they have multiple names they're kind of joined together in some way like this and then you can use the dot syntax point number 1 uh point number 2 is for some reason if you have a column called count or something like that which happens to be a pandas function name and if count is also a pandas function name there could be situations where you have clashes and it won't work so there are some edge cases so anyway why did i say all this i just to warn you that i do nowadays write my code with a dot syntax for columns at least for single columns because it's easier than putting all these brackets and quotes and everything but there's couple of caveats and then since i'm here i will just say that if you had multiple columns and you wanted to subset them you just you can just use brackets and you can get through right you can use brackets and and put multiple column names in there and you can just get the subset of columns of interest so uh, just a quick aside on how to project things out in pandas okay so we got the age column now we run this function called is na on it so let's take the sum out so let's just say is an a and you will get back a boolean array and now we have the same question we asked before how do i find out which one is true which one is false true is equivalent to 1 in python so it's a trick whenever you want to do this you can do sum and it will just add up and tell you how many are true and how is an a is is an a is true though so that means those are blanks so now that you found that these nas are there now you come to the next thing in data data analysis which is how do you patch up these guys in some cases you want to do an average age or something if there are nas certain operations will fail with nas right you cannot add nas to others and so on so one one clever thing to do is to substitute the nas with a mean right so the nas you said is included into yes the yeah the one you should you should do this your own way i'm doing it kind of quote unquote a clever way maybe you might find a bug in my logic but yes the nas is the count so the nas is the um 177 should be the ones that are na okay in the in the data set uh let me see if i can check validate another way yes but that's what i would expect that's what i'm running it at least and that's what i see okay but now the harder problem is that i have 177 values which are na so now can somebody propose i want to fill it with something i can put na equals 0 is that a proposal or can you, so i came up with one proposal can we do better than put 0 there for nas so that i can at least total suppose i want to take the mean of the whole data set 
if I have a bunch of NAs in it, maybe mean is not well defined. How do I add NA to take a mean? So I could put all the NAs to zero. Can we do better? Anyone? I need a suggestion from someone. Quick. Do regress. <laughs> Regression is good, but can we do something simpler? Code them as missing. No, they're coded as missing. That's why they're NA, right? But I want to put a value in there. I want to put a value so that I can do something. What is the best proxy? What are the proxies for value? Zero is a proxy. Can we do better than? So, okay, I'll, I already hinted it, right? Maybe they could put the mean. I just say mean, but what mean shall I put there? Mean of the ages. So that is good. That is already a good starting point, right? Instead of putting zero, at least I put the mean, then it's like I've at least sampled from the population at hand, right? So yeah, so just, I can just do mean. So let's see how can we do mean, but now I'm going to propose, we can get much more clever than that, right? Why don't I take, for example, maybe the women are a subsample of the population. So maybe I can, if you're a woman, I can give you the mean of the women's ages. You see what I mean? Like the, the value that I fill in can be made more and more precise if we understand our data better and better. So let me just show you how to do something which sounds tricky, right? There are a lot of NAs, but if you're a male, I'll give you a different mean than if you're a female. If you're a male, I'll give you the mean of the male ages. If you're a female, I'll give you the mean of the female ages. And in pandas, that all becomes very simple. So for example, if you say df.group by sex dot age dot mean and run this query, one line query already gives me the two mean numbers, right? So the mean is available. Similarly, if you don't want mean, actually it's better to use median in this case you can get the median just as well. So now we, we know if you have an NA and you're a female, I will put 27 for you, for your age. If you're a male and you have NA, I will put 29. But how do I do that operation on my data frame, right? So I have to go and find all the locations, etc. So notice all of these, while I'm describing it to you, you should think about doing it in code. And even if you are that determined, try to write it in code. Sometimes we can write it elegantly in code, but often these things can be fiddly and involve a lot of loops and logic and so on. So let's do this in pandas, okay? So first thing was to compute the value. Now we can do this beautiful thing. You can group by, so we're gonna assign values. You can group by age and use this function called transform. And you can pass to it a function that will compute the median value, right? And then this whole thing will take care of it. Now I want to not beat this to death. I would rather you play with this section a little bit. Think about this and maybe next time there'll be a little time for us to discuss this before I get into data analysis, okay? But I just want to say to you that the way you will master this is exactly by playing through as examples like this, right? Create a, in this case, Titanic data set has given us situation. We're trying to accomplish something. So the first muscle that you must build is what can I do? For example, I want to fix the NAs. Okay, then I can fix it by different ways. And then how do I implement that using pandas? And the surprise for you will be in many cases, it'll be one, two, three lines of code, not 50 or 100 lines of code. Okay, quickly and efficiently, we can get it. So with that said, then I'm saying that now I can build more sophisticated prediction models. So here's one, and then we kind of wind up for today, but I just want to say that you can group by. So now you can say why not why we use only male and female to predict, but I can also use the passenger class, right? And so on to predict. So now you can build more, you can use more complicated group bys, and you can start doing survival counts and seeing if you get some idea. Okay. Now here I left a section. This is homework, but not I'm not going to grade you on this. If you're interested, you can try. So one some people had this idea that, you know, sometimes there's information that you can extract and create a new column, right? For example, in the name, there is the titles of people. You can see there's a Mr. and a Mrs. and Miss. And since the age column is already pretty hacky, 
maybe we can get some information out of the name column by extracting the titles out. And then maybe you can use that to make better prediction models, right? So you can, you can improve the age computation better than just saying average of male and female, because inside female, maybe the misses have a different median age. And so if you're a miss or a master in the main men's category, then they, I can give you the median age of the master for the younger people, then take the median of the whole population. So you can see, but hopefully it's a little tedious and frustrating, but if you like data and data analysis, this must all become like, uh, you know, things that we get through, right? We can, we can do it so we can keep our goal on building a good prediction model, but we can work through all these kind of corner cases that are tricky logical cases. So here's a little challenge for you. You can go and try. I even showed you some code from the internet. Uh, I do would, I would so much love if you discuss with me your experience working with the internet. And sometimes you will get answers even, but sometimes you will get lost because there's so many links and so many people and so many things. So please do let me know along the way how your experience has been. But no matter how you do it, I just want you to take time and think about these problems and get good at it. So try to try to see if you can use this. This was one of the techniques that people had used. I, I want to show you next time, if you remind me, a um, code that looks like this can be made much better. So the internet does give you code that is a little, sometimes can be a little unpolished, right? And we, we should take it, we should take the idea and make it even better, okay? So try that out. Uh, there's this whole section on hierarchical indices. I put it here for you to just learn about it. Give it a read. I think I've talked a lot today, so I don't want to burden you with more technical stuff. If you want to just browse it, browse it. You definitely can use it for, for your project. But even next time, if you have questions, ask me, I can talk about it. Um, what else? Uh, I think I, we have a couple of minutes for questions or what is it? What time is it? It's almost time, isn't it? Does anyone have questions at this point? Engage me. Now is your time. Are you all tired? There is at least one person that I had put some code in here for that I can show. Uh, but I let, let me see if I can find it. Uh, but please, um, questions would be good. Anyone? Come on, help, help me here. Sorry, can you talk about the data inconsistency? Yes, yes, Maggie, I'm with you. I Yes, I have you on my mind when I said there's a question that somebody asked. So yes. Uh, uh, I will just hold on to that question, but if others have questions quickly, you should ask now. because then I will go to Maggie's questions. Maggie's question, by the way, was very, very tricky for me to find out. Uh, I think I put it here. Otherwise I will send it to you. Let me see. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, um, so Maggie, your question was the following. You can see here, I just, it's, it's in this notebook. So if you want, you can run it and then you can follow up with me on it, okay? The question you had was that you ran a particular kind of SQL. I think this is the SQL you gave me. Can you can you can you read it and let me know if that's kind of what? Well, I just have the uh, student in course value for it. You had uh, student in course is two, and I think course ID one. Is that, is that right? So you confirm it while I engage the other students. Okay, just take a look at that quickly and let me know. Um, I'm just addressing that comment to Maggie, but for the others, uh, any other questions? So I can take it quickly and then we can even wind up soon. Yes, it is, it is different, but I will, I will talk you through it. So if you can go back and look at it, but I just wanted to show you that the idea was that if you select a particular ID from the student in course table, and then you run the SQL, each student in course should have 
you know, only four assignments, but actually there are eight. And the reason was that the student in course ID in this table was actually duplicated. So that was the source of the problem. So that's why I told you it's a little technical, but maybe what I'm saying makes sense to you. If not, what we can do is I can send you this code and we can run it together and discuss it more. Okay, while I'm waiting for Maggie's response, what about the others? Any other questions from you? I, did I cover enough for you to feel comfortable to finish your assignments? Because some of you had sent me emails and I said, I'll discuss, I'll discuss code board and your submissions and so on. Do you have enough to, to take a crack at it and you feel like you can do it? Can somebody let me know? Anyone? Uh, so Maggie, let's do this way because there are so many others who are waiting. Uh, I'll send you an email. I'll write this up and send it to you. Okay. And then you reply to me and then we'll take care of it. Yes. Yes. We'll look at it together. Yes. But please ask other questions that everyone can share in. Yes. Uh, okay. Thank That's good. Some, some people say it's clear. Christian had a question in lab two. What is the test function checking for? What is that again, Christian? What is the question? Get distinct values. It is not iterable. Okay, so that is a good example, Christian. If you have some problem like that, just save down your code and just send me an email, okay? Just send me an email and say, this is what I have written. And then I will look at it and I will quickly run your code and respond. That's probably the best way. I don't think there's anything very theoretical, but yeah, let's just see what's going on. Does that, does that work for you? Yeah. Okay, good. And hopefully that's true for all of you. Just sit down, uh, get a coffee or whatever your favorite beverage and, you know, try to work through those questions. If you really get stuck and you cannot solve it, just send me an email, just save it down before you send me an email and then highlight what is not working the way you thought it would. Usually, I, at least those who have exchanged emails with me, we find out quick, pretty quickly how to proceed, right? So there's nothing very difficult once we are clear what is the question, we can easily solve it. So yes, I moved the, uh, I moved the lab two, lab one, lab two dates back by a week. Is that, is that enough for all of you? Don't wait till the last day, but is that, was that okay? Was that enough? Or was that not even required? Okay, somebody said thank you. Okay, okay, okay. I'm here to help you guys, okay? So please ask, don't wait for me. I came up with a suggestion. None of you even came up with that question of asking me, can you please give us a little more time? But anyway, I'm, I'm here to help and make sure, but please don't uh, use the fact that dates have moved out to not do work right away, right? The next three weeks, at least, if you put some serious effort in here and write a good project, it will leave you in a tremendously good place. You may not even realize today, but I can, I'm sure looking back, you will, you will value that time. So try to carve out some time. And if there's any way I can help, let me know. Even if you want to brainstorm some question, you can send it to me. So, okay, I won't hold all of you longer. Uh, I will follow up with Maggie about that question. But if any of you have questions, write to me and keep up the good work. This is uh, just two, three weeks of hard work and you'll have something really good in your hands. You pick up a good skill. So the next class, I will talk about actually doing some analysis. So maybe we'll do linear regression or something. Uh, and then in the last class, we will do some visualization, right? So by the time you'll have all the, all the ingredients to write a nice project. We'll have a couple of data models that you can run. You'll have some visualization code. And now hopefully with today you have data manipulation code. So you can go and find your data, download it, load it in pandas and do your analysis. So with that said, I let you go and uh, thank you so much. And your questions are great and your emails are wonderful. So don't hesitate to ask, I'm here to help.
So we'll wind up now. Thank you.